let's call the meeting to order, please. Uh, first item on the agenda is the public hearing for sweat equity um, presentation. This is a public hearing. Now, um, we have to vote to open the public hearing nowadays. So, I will make a motion. Well, hang, hang on, let's keep that thought. Okay. Um, we got Dan, we, Mike is not, oh, Mike is here, Carl is not. Okay, Jennifer's here, Trish is here, John is here. Okay. Um, okay, Dave, uh, David, you are um, going to be in place of Carl, okay? Okay. That's the way we go. All right. Now. Lisa is online and Mike D'Amato is online as well. Lisa Griffin is online and Mike D'Amato is online. Oh, yeah, she mentioned she was. Oh, AJ Malucci is also online. He's the, um, uh, for the public hearing, the applicant. Oh, okay. Um, no, we still got Dave yeah, and Lisa here. now. Okay, that's good. Now, now you can make the motion. I would like to make a motion to open up this meeting to the public. Okay. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Well, the meeting is now, the public meeting is now open, and I have to read the public hearing legal notes. But before I, I guess I have to do this. Regular members presented, pre present for tonight's hearing are myself, George Cornelius, John Rusnock, Jennifer Frank, um, Trish Rondeau, let's see, Dan Method, Mike Malloy, Carl is out. Um, we have David Tobin as an alternate, but he's filling in for Carl, and Lisa Griffin, who is on um zoom procedure for tonight's hearing will be as usual first to hear from the applicant and then those who wish to speak in favor of the application then those opposed followed by any general comments anyone who wishes to speak we ask that you please come forward and speak into the microphone for reporting purposes as required by law please be sure to state your name and address I will now read the legal notice as it appeared. Oh, oh, it, okay, in the Hartford Current, we will now. Okay, the East Granby Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 7th. 2022 at 7 p.m. in the East Granby Town Hall, hearing room 9, Center Street, and via Zoom concerning the following. Application CC 2204 by Sweat Equity LLC for construction of a self-storage rental facility at 10 Connecticut South Drive. This application is on file and may be seen in the office of the building department. Okay, that's taken care of. Now, where is the applicant? Okay, sir. Um, you are going to give a brief, or not a brief, but um, a presentation of what this entails, the application entails, right? Okay. When you complete the application, uh, complete your presentation, I think it would behoove us to go right to the comments of the town engineer. Have you had a chance to look at them? Yes, sir. Okay, good. We'll have a discussion on that. Okay, go ahead. Great. Well, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Dave Zayax. I'm a professional engineer with F.A. Heskett Associates. We're located here in town over in Creamery Brook. And um, we're here representing the applicant, um, Anthony Malucci on in the virtual world out there. Um, He's the principal of Sweat Equity LLC. Um, he called me this afternoon and said he was 
pretty much under the weather, and I said, good, stay home, don't, don't come to the public meetings. But he's available for any questions you might have for the applicant. Uh, the site is uh, on the westerly side of Connecticut Drive South. It, um, it feels when you're standing there that it's on the south side of the road, but there's a big curve in the road there, so uh, technically it's on the west westerly side of the road. Uh, it's 3.87 acres, it's zoned CPA, it's the Commerce Park. Uh, the site is currently uh, mostly wooded, um, typical wood and vegetation that you find uh, throughout uh, you know, this industrial section of the town. Um, the wetlands limits that are shown on the plans, those were flagged back in uh, February of 2021, and you have the uh, report from the soil science, uh, scientists from soil science. Uh, there's about 0.69 acres, which is the westerly part of the top part, the green part of my colored rendering there, is uh, primarily all wetlands, 0.69 acres. Uh, the proposal is to build nine standalone buildings, sort of that uh, brownish color on my drawing there. They would range in size from 1,800 square feet to 5,600 5, square feet for a total of 34,000 square feet. To be a small office located down in that uh, first building, it's building number nine on your plans, a small management office, customer office. And this is going to be a typical one-story self-storage facility that you're seeing popping up pretty much all over Hartford County. Uh, there will be parking for very minimal parking, just four spaces at the uh, office. Uh, and there would be one single driveway cut out to the uh, public street. Uh, we would be served by uh, MDC water and then uh, connected to the public sewer here in East Grand. Um, the stormwater control on the site, um, rather than take up lots more space trying to build uh, open detention basins, uh, we've chosen to go with uh, underground storage chambers, infiltration chambers, you know, following the current accepted LID practices in that design. All flows generated on the site will be directed to our un new underground system. And in our calculations, we were very conservative in that we did not take any credit for infiltration that will take place on the site with these underground chambers. We treated them as though they were just sealed storage chambers. That ends up with a very conservative design uh, you know, as part of the overall uh, analysis of the site. Uh, but given the uh, underlying uh, sandy soil conditions on this property, uh, with the, with the uh, infiltration that will definitely occur on the property, um, not much runoff is actually ever going to leave this site except for maybe the largest uh, storm events. Every day, regular storm events, I don't think really anything is going to leave the site. I'm just going to flip the uh, page here. I've done a little coloring up of uh, the grading plan that's in your package, GR2, GR1. And you can see it's oriented the same way. Um, the green line up at the top is the uh, edge of uh, flagged wetlands, and you can see the buildings have been outlined from the previous colored plan. Um, as part of our overall drainage system, we have provided the necessary water quality volume that will be contained in the uh, infiltrator systems. Um, there is an existing town system that goes from Connecticut South Drive along our northerly property line, the right property line, and that discharges directly to the wetlands. Uh, we're not uh, altering that drainage system at all. I think the town engineer is suggesting that we provide a, a real uh, drainage easement. Right now, you have rights to drain and have sort of a de facto drainage easement across the property, but one has never been dedicated. So we will dedicate a drainage easement over that pipe. Uh, as, yeah, as it should have probably been done years ago. We have uh, trapped hoods on our, our catch basins that are collecting water from the pavement that goes around the buildings, you know, for access for vehicles around the buildings. So we have trapped hoods and then which discharge into our underground uh, system. And then we have um, three discharge points 
uh, along this along our um, you know westerly side, our, our development edge. And um, I'll just point to them here so you can see them. There'll be one discharge point here, here, and here. The town discharges, town sewer discharges at the same location right here. Storm or sewer? Storm. Okay. It's the drainage system basically for Connecticut South in this, you know, in this area. Um, so to minimize our encroachment towards the wetlands, uh, we're proposing to use uh, a retaining wall along the, uh, the right-hand side of the site, which is the northwest corner of the site. Um, that eliminates the need to slope down closer to the wetlands. And um, we're providing, as you can see on our sheet LS1 in the package, we have a, a buffer landscaping proposed all along that westerly edge, um, you know, facing the wetlands. Um, in the area in front of the wall, we have uh, buffer plantings, typical buffer plantings uh, proposed all along the face of the wall and then the slope over on the left side. And then that area down at the bottom along the, uh, in front of the uh, shrubbery would be planted with conservation seed mix, which will basically mix in with whatever mother nature decides to grow down there and will seal up the site right up to the face of our disturbance. Um, as pointed out in the town staff uh, comments, the site will be uh, completely um, circled with a six foot high security fence. And uh, that fence running along that westerly boundary will be uh, both on top of the wall and then along the edge of our curbing. And that will act as a natural additional buffer for no further encroachment towards the wetlands. It will also, uh, for, <coughs> for both uh, folks and whatever, and. Uh, the big thing, too, will keep any trash or anything coming off our surface from blowing over into the wetlands. Um, so that acts as a nice uh, additional buffer. It's made for security, but it also has another function. So all in all, we have no direct wetland impacts with this project. Uh, the disturbance is within the 100-foot upland review area, which is sort of that orange line that I have zigzagging through the, I guess you could argue, the middle of the site there. That's about 1.24 acres total disturbance there. Um, staff comments. Uh, we have uh, received a report today from the town planner. Uh, we have no issues with those recommendations and comments in that report. And then I've had an opportunity, as the chairman pointed out, to uh, review the town engineer's comments. And we have no uh, real concerns with his comments. Um, his uh, he uh, indicated in his report that he had uh, no concerns with our stormwater design or calculations, and that uh, I believe the other comments are relatively minor and can be addressed as uh, recommended conditions of approval. We'll work that out with the town engineer. Okay, uh, that's where that's where we are right now. Um, before we open it up to the public, um, do you think you can have the revised documents? further to um, uh, review letters by the next, by our January meeting? Oh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> and by the way, congratulations on passing the water test. We've been arguing about that for a, a year now, and you did it in one application. This is good. Well, thank you. I'm, uh, this is pretty much the state of the art that we're all going yeah. towards now. Uh, we're nice. using these underground chamber systems everywhere. Um, they become very readily available. It used to be a problem getting them, not anymore. And they avoid big, open, clear detention ponds, especially when we have sand soils. Okay. Is there anybody in the, in the hearing wants to talk for the application? Anybody would like to talk against the application? Okay. Yes, Does the board have any or the mission have any comments questions uh, I'm uh, if uh, if the applicant is willing to uh, uh, tick off uh, all the items on the engineering report uh, uh, I can live with that that's for sure okay I have a question yes I'm sorry I didn't study the way these chambers work so water just seeps slowly out of them into the groundwater yeah, the, um, there is an outlet provided, but generally, it's, in this case, it's like a six-inch outlet from a 
uh, but it's set above the water quality volume that's required for the project, you know, doing DEP calculations. So basically, for all practical purposes, all of the water quality volume is going to infiltrate. It's never, it's never going to reach the discharge point. Um, discharge so point meaning? Those three discharge points. Each, there's actually three separate systems, um, and oh. there's three discharge points. And the reason why I did that is I'm, I was trying to spread out the discharge points equally along the edge of the wetland to sort of simulate or emulate, you know, run off into it now, rather than focusing it all on one point. So salt that gets put down here or oil that might drip out of a car will sort of over time just get filtered through the ground? Yeah, the sand does an excellent job in doing that. Um, but we also have trapped hoods in the catch basins, so really any kind of floatables oils really should be trapped in the catch basins. They shouldn't make it to the uh, infiltrators. Is there a clean out recommendation? For yeah, we have a maintenance basin? plan on there. Those should be cleaned out every year. Uh, and the, that's the, one of the comments from the town engineer. He'd like to see a few more inspection <coughs> at it, which is fine. Uh, but those should be inspected every year or two just to see if they need to be vacuumed out in any way. Usually they not. Yeah. Thank you. What kind of precautions are you going to take when the wall is being fabricated within several feet of the uh, wetlands? Um, basically, we're going to put up a sill fence as we've got shown. Um, the, these walls are these large block walls, and they're actually very simple to construct. Um, so uh, we've been very successful in working really up to the edge of wetlands and water courses installing these walls. Uh, there's no concrete footing that needs to be poured or anything. You basically clear out the soil, get it stable, you put in about a foot of stone, and then you can just stack your blocks right on top of that rather than a big excavation for concrete footings and things of that nature. You are not concerned with washout underneath the wall? No, uh, especially with the sandy soils out here, you know. Um, a foot of stone does a really good job. We put a we put an underdrain behind the wall. Okay. Um, been very successful with them. There. I wish I could say they're more exciting to build, but they're <laughs> they're basically giant Lego blocks. Yeah. Any more comments? Questions? My question may not be related to how the construction is going, but do we, are there any rules and regulations regarding what's going to be stored in those self storage units? I'm sure TPZ will put some on. Uh, we have no intentions of storing. These are meant for, for basically for residential purposes. Um, so there's, there's not, we're not going to allow any chemicals to be stored in here. Uh, no vehicles are going to be stored in the, in the, uh, in the uh, units. Um, it's, you know, basically, what, to be honest with you, the reason why you're seeing these popping up everywhere, they're following the multifamilies. So as we all desire to, to have more multifamily and things and, and more affordable housing, uh, those units don't provide much storage, and that's why these these self storage facilities are following the multifamily around. Uh, as is, two two of our biggest projects we're working on now are self storage facilities and car washes. Everybody, car washes are following the apartments too, because you can't wash your car in an apartment. Anything else? Thank you. All right. Um... I think we'll vote to continue the hearing uh, into Jan our January meeting. I'll make a motion to continue it. Uh, so second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Enjoy the holidays, and we'll see you in. Thank you very much. See you next year. Next year. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Jump to the new business. East Granby Land Trust, lot 21, at Russell, Russellton Avenue, CC2205. Now this is the receipt of the application. Um, what we have to do is, the commission has to look at the application and, and see if they think it is, um, Sufficient to go ahead and start looking at it for approval. So, any comments? Oh, wait a minute. Um, have you had a chance to look at the comments from the town engineer? I mean, it just came out what today. Yeah. 
Okay, that's that's still on the table here now. That'll be addressed at the next meeting. All right. Yeah, we will address all of them. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I have I just skimmed through them, so I'm not really up to speed on it. Um, the other thing that we have to decide is is there a possibility of a significant impact with this project? Uh, oh, we have another major thing we have to do. Two ladies have to disappear. You mean abstain? Great. Are well, you on the land trust too? Yep. You guys can go out hold in the up, hall. Hold on, hold on, though. I mean, we can listen. You're a we member. Just, right. George Cornelius is also a board member. Ex officio, which means I don't yeah. vote, and therefore I have nothing to do with what you do. Same with me, George. Yeah, I, 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 okay. Just, so you're still in. So I'm still in, but I just want to let people know that I am on the land. Okay, trip. no, that's fine. Let's get it all out. Anybody else? Nobody else. Okay. So can we, we can sit and listen, though? Well, by the way, sit down for a second. I don't think, George, I don't think there's anything. Well, they don't have to be technically. They do. Technically, you have to leave. Yeah. But. Given the situation now, here, oh, she's she's recused herself. as you sit yeah, in the back, okay. now, no talking, no hand no, signals, I mean, no rude animal uh, noises. I mean, I mean, okay. No, I, I get it. It was a really contentious. <laughs> All right. So with that in mind, Still have a quorum, we're okay. That's good. Um, okay, um, Lisa, are you there? On. Yes, I'm here. Hey, you vote. Uh, you you were voting for either Trish or um, Jennifer. Okay. Got it. All right. So looking at what has been proposed, well, wait a minute. Let's have a brief um, explanation of what you're doing. So we're all on the same page, okay? Yeah, so again, I am Samantha Kowalski and I am a senior at East Jersey High School and an intern on the East Jersey Land Trust. It's for me, half the progress and plan of building East Bridge. And we have reviewed our plans based off your recommendation and made some changes to the bridge construction plan. Yeah, we now plan on anchoring the bridge with cement deck blocks instead of with holes into the ground. So we no longer plan on digging into the soil to anchor the bridge. And to briefly go over our materials here, we have a trail map on the front page here. Yeah. Okay. This here with the dash line here, this is the flood zone line. Right down the middle here. Yeah, the highlighted line. Okay, so what you have done then you changed the support for the bridge, I understand that. But the bridge is still in the same location. Okay, which means it's in the floodplain, which means it's in the wetlands. Yeah. Um, basically, that's all we need for the significant impact. Um, if it's in the floodplain and it's in the wetlands, and then we have to evaluate whether there is a significant impact. Any questions on that? Samantha to go over the plan. She's happy to go over it now and go over the revision. Speak up, please. If you'd like Samantha to go over the plan, she can go over it now and then go over the revision in January uh, per the engineer's plan. So it's up to you guys what you want, but right. happy to go over everything now. Thank you very much. What we need right now is to get over this hurdle with a significant impact so we can schedule, if it goes through, we can schedule the public hearing that will be required at our next meeting. That's that's what I'm driving for right now. Okay, you, you answered the big question. Any concerns? Okay. 
You all right? I had some comments, and I don't know where they are. So you want a motion to accept the application, Joy? What I... Yeah, we can accept the application. If, um, because it's it indicating significant impact. Yeah, okay, well, let's do this. Let's accept the application, and then we'll have a vote on the significant uh, impact. We have a motion to accept the application as submitted of CC application. Actually, it's not, where is this? It's just number 22-05. Is that okay. the CC number? Yeah. CC 2205. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 How are you aye. doing? I think that was an aye. Huh? I think she said aye. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, right, so that was an aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've accepted the application. Next question. We have to evaluate if the significant impact may exist. That's just to get the public hearing so we can evaluate it to see if there is an impact. We're not going to make that decision now. I'll make a motion that we uh, vote that there may be a significant impact with this application since it exists entirely in the uh, wetlands. So just before we get, get to that, can I just ask a question? Sure. Because it appears to me that it's been, the comments have been made by the, the our engineer already. We have, uh, we have a list of proposals for approval. He wouldn't. What was? What am I reading? He would only address the technical aspects of it. No, well, so conditions of approval is what. I'm yeah, doing. but that's that's based. This is the standard format that we use. This is based upon his evaluations and the normal things that he adds to it. it has nothing to do with determining impacts. That's that's a function of. Uh, Commission. Okay, so we can assume there's an impact. We in, assume that may exist, yes. Right. And based on his comments, we can, we can. Are you saying you didn't have time to review the. What, what's going to happen, uh, Mike, is we're going to have a vote. If the vote it's, goes positive or this, uh, that a significant impact may exist, then we will schedule a public hearing to evaluate all of the comments. If we determine that there, if we vote that there is no significant impact, then we could go directly. No, we'd still have to wait the 15 days. No, we'd still have to wait till next uh, meeting to go through all the technical evaluations. Plus the fact that, like I said, the um, town engineer comments on this we just got, so we haven't had a chance to really look at it. They really just put it in the box today. Yeah. I was surprised we got that soon. So if we determine a significant impact, which we... We're we, not going to determine that. We're just going to say it may exist. May, right. So we may, may then we have to have a public hearing. Yes. Okay. So, guess there's no way around that. Yes. Right. Okay. I, just, I made the motion that we would have the um, um, vote for uh, to determine if there is a significant impact. Second. Anybody want to second it? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So, Laura, we will have the uh, public hearing for the uh, January meeting for uh, this application. So should we have her make her presentation now? No, let's wait until next meeting when we'll be up to speed and it'll be a lot, be a lot, mean, a lot more meaningful. Okay. Public hearing. Um, you wait until the January meeting? Push back being able to make a decision another 14 days? 
No, what will happen is, depending on how the issues that have been raised by comments and comments from the, uh, the commission here, if they can be resolved next meeting, the paperwork is up to date. Theoretically, we could vote after the um, um, after the meeting. After the uh, public hearing is closed. Yeah, yeah. Now, one thing that we need, I stressed this before, since this is being performed in the wetlands, we have to make sure the land trust has evaluated and documented why this is the best solution. What other solutions were looked at? Okay. We can't, be, if we approve it, and there's still a significant, we haven't resolved the significant impact, it still exists, then we have to write a letter to the DEP saying why we approved it, even with the significant impact. The first question they're going to ask is, well, what alternatives did the applicant address that made it that it was necessary to do this? So our hands are tied. That this is whatever you give me is going to the DEP. Okay, right. you clear on this? I am, and I know I talked to you last time about talking with DEP, and I did talk with Peter Fricon from DEP. And he okay. was clear that he could not weigh in on it until you made a decision on it because that's the order in which things go. So he said he couldn't come look at it, he couldn't give us advice that had to go through you first. Okay. So what you're saying, George, is they need to say that they looked at other options. And what are those options? Okay. That the option that you, if there's some formal statement that they looked at the other options, these yes. were the other options, and this is why we concluded this was the best option. So, for example, saying that there's only 50 feet of land and it all crosses water, there really isn't another option besides did, did having you, kids walk on a well, that's in the negative. Just say you looked at all the other locations. This is, no, no, no. you know, I'm not putting words, but if you no, looked at the other locations and you decided this was the shortest span, this was the most tenable yeah. span. Right. Is there another way that the path could run? Is there right. another way that? Um... I can write that. Okay. Are you, are you using it for the safety of the, of the people using the path? Correct. Yes. So you, you have not addressed any safety issues, right? Uh, what do you mean? Like as far as that, that we don't want kids walking on Hartford Avenue like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I will put that in a paragraph. That's a good one. Yeah. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you. Uh, Thanks for trying to make a presentation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. Don't worry. No, okay. You'll have your moment. Okay. Um, anything else? Commission wants to talk to on this issue. Be careful with the documentation where the term contractor appears. Are you going to have a contractor on this job? I'm just asking. You don't have to answer, but if you do, they got to be identified. Same way with fabricating the bridge. How's that going to be done? I didn't see any paperwork on that. Well, I missed that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Can you repeat? I just missed what you were saying there. There's a Documentation contract. in a couple areas say that there's going to be a contract or makes reference to a contractor. Is that going, is there going to be a professional contractor on this? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Do you don't have to answer this now. Okay. I'm just, just telling you. Okay. Now, don't forget you're fabricating a bridge that's 20 some feet long. You have to pick it up. You have to put it down. How's that going to be done? All right. You can build in stages. Well, that's what they got to tell us. If there is a contractor, you have to identify the then contractor. It, that's what you have, say, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's something I bring before you. Like my understanding was that goes before Mark. It goes in the package, so it goes before Mark plus us. Okay. It just wraps it up all around. Also, I noticed in the um, milestones, there's no milestone for fabrication of the bridge or installing it. These are the little things that we 
we, we catch that have to be addressed. Okay. Do you, do you have a time frame that you would like to have the bridge done by? Well, I need to have it completed by early spring. So it's really, will be completed within a few weeks. It's dependent on when it is approved. And we'll begin construction as soon as possible. She's got to get this done so she can get it approved for a graduation. Yeah, and they do want to try and get it. You graduate in June, don't you? Well, they got yeah, to. the capital projects are due. And Really? In a couple of weeks. Yeah, like, right. Well, I know. I have yeah, a... like February, March. Yeah. All right, we'll do the best yeah, we can. I'll continue to construct after that time. I can, yeah, if I have to. Yeah. But I do want to try and construct while the ground is frozen still, though, involved in winter, so that we disturb as little as possible. Okay, and we still do not have an evaluation from um, the town uh, manager. So I suspect we'll be getting that soon. From Robin? Robin, yeah. I Michael is on the phone on her behalf. I don't know. Michael, you have anything you want to add? I think that, yeah, Robin has just started looking at the plans. And, and because this was just for receipt, um, there's no like formal plan review or, or memo that's been done. But that will be part of what is included for the public hearing for the next meeting. Any questions from the public? Okay. We will see you in January. Happy holidays. Yeah. <laughs> What's the date of January? January 4th. January 4th. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> All right. Next item, minutes, 11.2 uh, two minutes. Any motion? Any comments? Question? Oh, I got a question on this. Um, and uh, while you're here, you may be able to answer this. In our minutes, in the... Um, First paragraph, the last sentence. The, the sent, uh, minutes read: the Bridge was designed by Ian Clark, engineer and longtime resident of East Granby, and was also reviewed by an additional bridge engineer. Was it reviewed by an additional bridge engineer? It was, but I don't know. That's what you're looking for. So I can get that name, but I did not give it at that point. Okay. All right, then it's okay. Any co any other comments on it? In the minutes. Let's see where the minutes go. For the sake of discussion, I'll make a motion to approve. <laughs> Everybody okay? Comments? Yeah. Okay, yep. go at it. Need a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay. All right. He takes care of that. Um, old business. Okay, Mike, you're on. Did you um, communications or skip communications or? Uh oh, I'm sorry. I. I Jump. Commit, uh, communications. We have had two. We have had a staff memo regarding Brignall wine, Winery and a Connecticut Land Trust Council donations request letter. I have it here. I just got it. Um, let me look at it and I'll address it in the next meeting. Um, let's talk about the staff meeting. Uh, staff memo that Robin sent out dated November 8th. Um, I have one major comment on this, Mike. It's not signed. Okay. 
we have to have a signature for it. Um, and I, I have some comments. Okay, hang on a sec. Um, okay, you go ahead. Please. I, Mike, I take very strong exception to this memo by Robin, the idea that there's no possible pollution impact. I would disagree. Gasoline, oil, very unlikely uh, RV black water, but those are definitely pollutants that could get introduced into Salmon Brook. I, I don't know how close these cars are parking. But I, I just don't see how that can be ignored, that there isn't a danger well, of pollution to Salmon Brook let, from allowing hundreds of cars to park next to the brook. Let me answer it, Mike, and argue with me, uh, argue with you, uh, off the bar. In the, in the paragraph that starts further concerns, what she's saying, yes, there still can be pollution. If it happens. If not, wait a minute, hang on. Why wait until it happens? Now you get into it. <laughs> This says that if it happens, yes, we'll address it through zoning enforcement action. This ignores the fact that we're trying to preclude it from happening. Okay? Yeah, I do. You got that, Mike? I just completely disagree. I, I think I, that the, the challenge is that it, you can't necessarily say we think something might happen and because it might happen, we therefore want to regulate it accordingly because you regulate activities that could have that have impact that are before you you regulate things that come before you someone is asking approval to conduct an activity and they may or may not carry that out if you approve it but you can't say that we want to become involved in a process because there's a potential for something to happen and we want to sort of proactively work with the property owner to impose conditions or to to establish standards to prevent something that may or may not happen. That gets to the second thing that we asked for was a letter from the commission to PNZ, uh, to PNZ to look at the review they performed on this uh, plot plan saying just that. How's that letter going? A review that they perform on the plot plan saying what that so George I think what 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 they're saying here is they determine or Robin's determining by her reading of it that that no letter review was not required no 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 you're talking about the letter she's no she's saying that we can't impose anything on them is what this boils down can, to. Can we send them a comment or no, a no, concern? Hang on a sec. At the September, or no, maybe it was the October meeting, we decided, well, we might not be able to impose our regulations, let's just put it that way. In the rearview mirror. That we asked that they, well, I'll tell you what, it's in the minutes. Why give it anything else? Oh. Okay, on other business, this is in the minutes, Mike. The commission held a discussion regarding the location of overflow parking on the recently revised site plan for Brignall Vineyards. George Cornelius stated that both Michael Tomadio of Tyke and town planner Robert Robin Newton have commented that the Conservation Commission do not have jurisdiction regarding this issue. It was decided that the commission would ask Robert, Robin Newton to write a letter on behalf of, on their behalf to the Planning and Zoning Commission to express their concerns regarding the site plan, ask them to consider a to consider a hundred foot buffer from Salmon Brook for the overflow parking and request a written response from them regarding the rationale for their decision. Mr. Cornelius asked that the letter emphasize the purity of Salmon Brook, the unique characteristics of the Farmington River watershed and the lower Far Farmington River and Salmon Brook wild and scenic designation. All right. I'm looking at this as Robin has confirmed in writing why we can't do anything. Okay. 
So be it. We don't have any wiggle room whatsoever. According to Rob. According to Rob. But I, I, when you look at it, I think she's correct. Well, I, don't I am. I, and then not to like, I mean, isn't everything we do what she's saying we can't do? I mean, she's citing our regulations as any use within an adjacent, adjacent upland review area, which involving removal of obstruction, construction, alteration, or pollution, which may, not is or has, may negatively impact. That's what we do every time we meet. That's exactly what we do. We look at each application, and she's saying that somehow that regulation, and feel free to weigh in here, Mike, but she's saying that wording precludes our ability to review it. It's almost like so. The, Am I missing? The, I think the, the distinction is that when people come before you, they are asking for permission to conduct an activity which you regulate, which may disturb soil in, in a wetland or watercourse or in an upland review area. But the parking of a vehicle in this case, there's no activity which this commission regulates. They're, they're not going to ask the commission for approval to park that the vehicle there. And so there has to be an activity that triggers your jurisdiction for you to then weigh in. And regarding the review from the Planning and Zoning Commission, that was a site plan administrative review. It wasn't a public hearing, which would have provided for an entity, even the, even this commission to have sort of formalized comments or participated in the process um, because it's administrative, it's effectively a not to, not to walk on their toes or but to quit, but they can administratively adjust any plan that's been previously approved without a public hearing, without any sort of review by the other boards or commissions. The, for a site plan, they can approve, they can they can modify or they can deny but the site plan process doesn't allow them to basically accept correspondence from say you guys but once saying, they approve something, once they approve something they can administratively uh, modify it in any way they want period not following approval they can't well well they, you're telling us they had an approval was it a it was a tentative site plan that they hadn't approved there was this it was a site plan application, which means it was administrative. It didn't uh, involve a public hearing. So it's basically it comes in. If it meets the regulations, it's approved. Um, so if it had a public hearing, then they they could have um, accepted correspondence from members of the public from this commission or others, which said we think you ought to consider, you know, 100 foot buffer, we think you need to modify this or that, that would come along with a special permit activity. But the site plan process is administrative. They submit, if it meets the criteria within the Planning and Zoning Commission's regulations, then the commission has to approve it. And if within 65 days they don't, it's automatically approved per statute. I don't see what the biggest problem is. We're trying to be proactive in preventing a contamination of a brook. Why can't, why can't they people look at it that way? We're trying to prevent something to happen. We, we can't regulate it, but we're trying to prevent something. Can we, do we have the authorization to put some barriers down at the bottom there to prevent it from any of the pollutants from going down into the brook? It, there, there, in order for you to be able to ask someone to perform activities which would be regulated, like installing barriers or, or taking other other actions, um, you have to have something that puts you in a position to have the authority to to compel them to do that. Um, so there, there's got to be something which checks the box of bringing an activity into the jurisdiction of this organization for you to then say, we want you to stay out of this area, we want you to install a buffer, we want you to, you know, remove this or add that, and and the parking of vehicles doesn't doesn't check the box of of being a regulated activity um and so then the, all those 
following conversations can't really occur. I understand what you're trying to achieve and I'm not suggesting that it, it doesn't make sense or that there's, there's no value in the conversation, but for, for, for those type of restrictions to be imposed upon any property owner, there has to be a nexus between what you're trying to do and the authority within the regulations, not a, something may occur. How do we change regulation? You, you, you could change the regulations. I mean, that process would involve <laughs> Um, that comes but, within planning and zoning's protocol. I mean, we don't, we don't, we, we, they set the regulations for us. We don't. You, you have complete control over your own regulations for this body. So if you felt there was changes to the regulations that could be made to expand the activities that you reviewed, or perhaps you wanted to establish a resource specific uh standard for you know certain rivers and brooks and streams you have the authority to modify those regulations you just have to send them to deep for comment before you finalize them but but mike these cars are compacting the ground which is going to affect the way water runs off into the stream i mean it definitely could affect the river just by parking the cars not if they leak just the process of parking cars close to the river is going to affect the ground. I mean, I just, the, the runoff could be different. Yeah, runoff is going to be based, based upon vegetation too. Yeah, the grass will all be trampled, you know, by the car tires. And so this gets back to George's uh, reference to the letter that we had requested. Correct, George? Yeah. So if we were to uh, highlight some of these concerns, who would we have draft that letter? Would that be you? Would, should that be George? Should we, that... asked, we asked Robin to do it, and my impression was she said yes. Could you get back to us on that? And, yeah, so I think um, it, what it sounds like is, and, and the other thing that, needs to be sort of needs to be consistent is that this activity right now we're talking about parking of vehicles within proximity to a water course it, it sounds like if there's concern about how that happens from this commission um, then maybe there needs to be a, a discussion about how that activity you know can be evaluated sort of globally because this is about brignall but it actually isn't about brignall because if you do it for brignall you have to do it for everybody and so it may be a big deal because of this use and this user and and this entity and and sort of the history related to all of that but at the end of the day you have to regulate everybody who parks a vehicle within proximity to any wetland or water course or none so so the conversation maybe more globally needs to be how do we put ourselves in a position where the town is reviewing these activities on a more consistent basis for Brignall for, or not and whether that and, and what's the mechanism for that um, because it sounds like you're really trying to think through how to how to look at these long term I'm sure it's happening elsewhere this is not the only place that there's a river do look at it every time we look at a site plan and we review it and we make comments about curbing and water flow right right and drainage and we do do that the, i think the issue here that's got everybody a little jazzed is the fact that we didn't get the opportunity to do this on a site plan change administrative or not whatever obviously there was some needle that was threaded that kept us out of the whole loop but normally any change like that we get presented we looked at those plans previously we had concerns about where the parking was going to be we were this is just one example but we were given one impression and then another and this is going to happen with the with the big warehouse plan where he they came in here and did their 300,000 square foot proposal then they went to the planning and zoning with a uh, what a 900 or 800 oh, yeah. Square, like within two weeks mm -hmm. and we had just got so when you start to get those differing I think any board is going to be like what are they what are you up to what are you trying to hide what do you why are you you know what are you wasting our time for in some ways but also what pro, what oversight do we miss when they do that 
And so, yeah, they would have had to come back to us, I suppose, with that 800,000 square foot one. But so, all this stuff, and, and it's the same thing with the parking. We looked at that. We had we had conversations. And the, that particular site's been before us on multiple occasions with a lot of different things. Some we agreed with, some we didn't. We we signed off on a, a rebuilding of a barn that we, we, you know, we didn't have to sign off on it, but we, we were given the opportunity to review it. Yeah. And that was standard. So we looked at that, and we, there was concerns expressed, but we couldn't do anything about it. But at least... At least we're kept in the loop of these impacting events that are occurring very close to sensitive wetlands. And does it, is that going to happen? I don't know what, it sounds to me like you're proposing that we have to start an enforcement board. And we're not, I mean, when applications are presented or come within our purview, there's going to be comment. And I think that the feeling of this board, if I'm not mistaken, is that we weren't included in that process and why not? And to avoid that in the future, what do we need to do? but also to express to the Planning and Zoning Commission that we think they should have asked, frankly, for our at least input, even if we didn't have any teeth behind it, we could have told them that's what we do. We look at these, we bring the, the I mean, the, 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 <laughs> the girl doing her capstone project is doing a, a serious review of what she's doing with a little bridge, no more than an eighth of a mile from what we're talking about, parking cars 10 feet, 50 feet from them. What's to prevent him to go ahead and making that a complete parking lot. Well, that's where they're saying that's where you get into the zoning enforcement. But, the but then, then we would get involved, right, with the, with the construction of that? Once it's a construction. If it's paved. Uh, it's getting it's around that by parking. Yeah, no, um, if they pave it, then we would get involved, right? If Lisa has a question it, online, too. Lisa is asking, so we may not have the authority to regulate the parking of cars, but don't we have the authority to regulate the creation of a parking lot? Yeah, but, oh, oh, oh. All right, let's let's do this. Mike, you understand what we're trying to do, right? At least you have a somewhat of a handle on it. Why don't you discuss it more with Robin and so the way that um, I see it is there's two, potentially three sort of questions. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, nor do I want to leave anything on the table. So, so let me see if I've, I've sort of summarized this, at least in my head. The first question that potentially may be worth getting more information on is, is there any merit to adjusting the definition of regulated activity? The second question is, or, or maybe is worth considering is, um, is this water course or or are there water courses or resources in town which are sensitive to the point where it makes sense to establish a resource specific review area effectively if xyz river is really important to the town then anything within 300 feet of xyz river we need to review because it's resource specific and we're going to pump up the review area because it's a really sensitive habitat, environment, whatever. Um, and then the third is basically can, uh, and, and frankly should, um, the definition of regulated activity be adjusted to effectively capture this activity so that you would have more oversight over what is happening. Um, I don't think you want to use it that way. Be modified such that we're preventing an event that was talked about, right. rather than relying on something that's post-event to correct it. Rather than relying on enforcement. Right. right. Prevention. I say we throw it up to her, get her feedback. We can put it on the agenda to discuss in January, and Fine. we can decide what direction we want to go. Fine with me. Any further discussion? What direction like, can we go? I'm what, sorry? What direction can we go? We well, we'll find out. I think that's what he was just saying. Yeah. Do we want it? How would we change our regulations or our description? Well, maybe so, not to change the regulations, but interpret the regulations. So the only thing I would add to that is, is do our regulations comply? Because the way she's describing it here doesn't seem to make sense to me based on our whole charge as a commission. 
also does it does it comport with state law with the state or the state suggested regulations because i know they have staff who gives guidelines for this sort of stuff and yeah. are we that right when, when you're saying we cannot you know that the, our regulations don't say that that's very town specific and i could tell you having sat through on some of the reviews there were different regulations that there's always things in there that get changed each time so would does she feel that our regulations are in agreement with what state recommendations or state regulations suggest or actually demand yeah we can do a review against the deep model regs to see if your definition of regulated activity is either expanded or reduced from what the model regs um, suggest. Okay. Okay. okay, so you're on the agenda then for uh, January meeting. Okay, guys, let's close this one off. Unless there's something you really got to say. Okay, um, Mike, old business reports and other business. So I, I had talked with Robin uh, if she had had any uh, update from Mark about um, new enforcement actions or administrative approvals, and she, she had none. Okay. Okay. No other business. I don't know what else would pop. Oh, uh, no, the administrative approvals. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on. New business. Um, we got the, the land trust taken care of. Next question, 6B, is the list of upcoming dates for our um, meetings. I, I, I'm thinking the July 5th one won't be an issue. Uh, I agree. OK, so that means the 4th is a Tuesday. And ours is the fifth, which is the Wednesday. Um, can we move it, uh, Laura? Could we move it to the next week or something? Yes, that would be the twelfth. Yeah, something like that. If we get our dibs in now, we'll probably get the room. So we can table this and vote on it in January. We, we got to vote on this before the end of the year, don't we? Yeah. Um, do you want to just vote on it and I will use July 12th for the July date? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve well, it. Hang on a sec. Uh, so July 5th is now July 12th? That's what I was motion I was going to make. <laughs> well, let's, we'll amend this and we'll vote on the whole list, right? Let me take a stab at it. <laughs> we'll make a motion to approve the listed the listed dates for the Inland Wetlands Conservation Commission as submitted for 2023, subject to the change of July 5th to July 12th. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That's good. Good work, Mike. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? That's good. Any other? Good. Okay. Now look, guys. Oh my this. Um, um business with the um storage units okay that's going to get hot and heavy next one and hopefully we'll be in line to uh have a good package and uh, may even be able to finally approve this if it's all together do we not vote on it tonight because they have to make revisions here's a comment mm -hmm. There are so many extensive revisions. If you look at the um, town engineer comments, there's quite a bit of drawing changes, additions, and all that kind of stuff. So we have to have that cleaned up. Uh, the big thing is, is the water design uh, sizing. Yeah, it's amazing. That was a little. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, it, it, it's. Um, I think we're well on our way, so let's make sure you go through it carefully. Now, the land trust business, um, there's going to be some hanging participles in there. Um, so if they, if they miss something, like any other application, we can vote to approve it subject to? Why not? No. 
we have to vote on a complete package. Even if it's a small thing? Even if it's a small thing. So isn't that the town engineers and the town building department's job? Well, now, to... the town engineers' comments I have not looked at. We just got them. Um, Robin has not submitted any review either. Well, so. he did. Well, just to be fair, I read through him in the parking lot. He did give conditions of approval. So as long as they meet those, it would satisfy him, I'm it assuming. Wasn't much. Yeah. Well, okay, but still he's got to be factored in. But they still have a lot of disconnects in their package. Like I was trying to tell them. Well, other than the, the engineers' yeah. approvals, if the as they comply with that, I don't know. Unless you, if you have something specific, George, just because we're dealing with a group that doesn't have a huge budget for hired engineers, and not to be unfair to anybody else who does, but I think if there's any specific concerns, it would behoove you to suggest by email to the town engineer what those might be. And maybe copy them on it so they have a. Well, if I suggest anything that we do that it's a suggestion like that, automatically goes to the applicant. Then to the which is it should be. Yeah. I mean that, that's the right way to do it. I don't know. I got to think about a few things. Uh, but I would like to see Robin's review first. What did you mean by milestones? In the drawings that's there. We always have a list of milestones for implementing the project. This is to allow the scheduling to progress. There's a list on I don't know which page it is. It's on one of the it's on this on the big uh, where did I put it? Uh, I don't know. It's on their big fold out drawing where they have the milestones listed. But they're missing some big ones. Like I said, they're missing the uh, construction of the bridge, installation of the bridge. Well, they've been a big, a big improvement. Where we started drawing into drawing that's going to put blocks on itself. That was a big one. When they want to change the construction of the bridge, that changed dramatically. They, Much less impact. I, they didn't really stress that. See, see, they, that when they were boring into the ground, they're going to have an impact. Whether well, no, but they're saying it, it's not going to have an impact, and I agree. There's still an impact. If you look on their drawing, they have a log that's installed down uh, in front of the. There's this is the. That's what it's done. Yeah, there's a this thing here. What are they no, doing? no, that's a sediment. That's to keep the. That was if they were going to build the. Uh, well, then they got to change it. Right, right. I mean, they that's what I said to Amanda. I said it's confusing that you're talking two different schemes. Are you digging the holes? Or are you setting it so you're confusing people by showing them to So that's got to be revised. Well, I think what she was trying to do is present you with an alternate. This no, was. No, no, no. No, no, no. Well, no, no. You asked them to come up with a less impact alternate. That's, they described that on a piece of paper that we add to it. No, we can't have, all, unless they circle it and say this was an alternative that we evaluated but we didn't use. We can't, that's too confusing. Right, right. I don't think they're really going to do this. They're going to do this thing where it sets on top of the ground. Yeah, that's what I would. Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. yeah, that's what she was talking. I about. I think the like, location changed yeah. it. That's what the you know not that. to. Uh, that's why she wanted to make her presentation to explain that. But we and I understand this the is, whole. Yeah, but they're going to do that. The presentation will not match the documentation. Well, it would have. No, well, not what they presented tonight, but to set up what they're going to present. In okay, January. now the next time the young lady's here, she can express that. She can it. bring it all together. Dude. But now, let's talk about that. For a bit. Let's think about that. Here, yeah. we're, here we're constructing a bridge. What is it? Twenty feet, twenty 26, foot span. Twenty six feet. Twenty six, but it. Twenty six by four. Twenty six foot bridge, three feet wide. Now, at one point, it was intimated that this young lady was going to build it. The whole team was talking to He didn't say that when we had the presentation. I'm going to volunteer a carpenter for it. So. You better have a regular, you better have a pro involved with it. We can't have a high school senior. No. Can can't can't go around in a high school shop, stuff. that's for sure. Can I jump in quick? What's that? We should probably wait to have these discussions until next meeting. You're right. You're absolutely well, but right. I, 
Uh, we're trying to set it up for success so they could pass it the next week. No, no, he's yeah, absolutely but they, right. They should be privy to these conversations. Yeah, they yeah. got to be here for these conversations. He's, he's right. Thank you. I know that I don't generally have the popular opinion, and I and I apologize for that, but um, maybe I'll get lucky with something that's uh, easier down the road. <laughs> hey, Mike, keep there. trying. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. <laughs> okay. Bye. We're out. Bye.